Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Hurrah! Look at that. That's a wonder of technology, isn't it? Um, okay, and let's make sure that my slides are advancing. So with a bit of luck, you'll see some glorious high quality animation. Um, so, hi everyone. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I really do appreciate it. Liz and I are absolutely gutted that we can't be there in person. COVID, as it turns out, sucks. Um, I want to really thank John T and the, the entire AV crew for arranging this at the last minute. I really, really appreciate it. So thanks everyone there. Um, because I'm not there to drink Club Mate with you, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please at me. I'm at Eden on Twitter. I'm also on Mastodon and MySpace and any other social network beginning with M, basically. Um, so um, look, just before I begin, I'm not a salesman. I have nothing you can buy. Uh, I don't have any shares in solar panels. I just want to, to share my love of all things solar and say, that, look, yes, even on this crowded, miserable, rainy, sodden island that we live on, solar power is effective. It really is. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the kit that you need. Uh, about money uh, as well. So, okay, um, I'm just gonna go over a few basic definitions just to make sure that we are all on the same page here. Okay, so um, the amount of energy needed to move one kilogram, one meter is one joule. Uh, the power needed to move a kilogram a meter in a second is one watt. Uh, to do that uh, for an hour is one watt hour. Uh, a kilowatt hour is, is a thousand watt hours, and that's what we use to measure uh, domestic electricity use. Uh, if you've got one of those old 100 watt light bulbs and you leave it running for 10 hours, then that uses one kilowatt hour. Uh, and the average home in the UK uses about 10 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. That, that I hope is fairly simple. Uh, if you prefer it in uh, horsepower, there is an equally simple formula. So um, how do solar panels work? So they, they are these big black glass things that you sort of stick up somewhere and they convert sunshine into delicious free range electricity. But how do they actually work? Yeah, all right, you, you probably wanted a slightly more detailed explanation than that as, as this is EMF. So here it is. What do you want from me? I am not a physicist. Look, uh, photons and they hit panels and there's quantums and electrons. Here is a very practical explanation. A photon comes down from the sun, it hits the panel and that generates direct current, DC. That goes down a wire into a box called an inverter, uh, which convert it, converts the direct current into alternating current, which is phase matched with your local grid. That then gets fed down into your consumer unit, it enters your wires as AC, uh, and then you have uh, your gadgets convert it back to DC uh, so they can do stuff. Uh, if it goes into batteries, then there's a further AC-DC conversion. So basically DC, AC, AC, DC, DC, AC. Has everyone understood that? Yes, good, right, let's just move on. So it is, it is actually really, really simple to get started uh, with, with solar panels. So um, all you need is a clear view of the sky. If you've got a roof, that's great, but you can use any space which has a clear view of the sky. If you have a balcony, if you're on a flat and you've got a balcony, you can hang solar panels off the balcony, as long as they're angled towards the sun, they will generate electricity. If you've got a shed or a field or a garden or anything with a clear view of the sky, you can use solar panels. Um, a word on trees, trees are the enemies of solar panels. You should chop down any tree that you, well, that's not very environmentally friendly, is it? Look, the, the big problem with trees is they tend to cast shadows. Uh, and if there's a uh, solar panel that's in shade, it won't perform as well. Uh, so if you do have trees near your solar panels, either move your solar panels or just trim the trees a little. Do not chop down trees. Trees are our friends. Um, so uh, as well as the panels themselves, you will need an inverter. This converts, as I said, the, the direct current into alternating current, which you can use. Now, you need that if you're doing this in a domestic setting, but if you've just got, you know, if all you want to do is charge your gadgets and your gadgets already use DC, you can just plug them straight into the solar panels. Um, so if you have a, a caravan or, you know, you just want to charge small gadgets, you can get small solar panels 
no inverter needed, plug your USB socket in there, and you will just get electricity flowing from the sun into your gadgets, which is uh, amazing. Um, you will need space in your consumer unit, which some people call uh, a fuse board. Um, you will also need a generation meter if you're doing this in the domestic setting because uh, the government needs to know how much solar power you're generating. Um, and you'll probably want an export tariff. So um, most uh, providers will uh, pay you to sell your electricity back to the grid. This, this sort of bends people's minds a little bit. So sun hits the panels, electricity is generated, it gets used in your home, but if you can't use all of the electricity, it then flows down the wires out into your neighborhood and your neighbors get to use your electricity and you can get paid for that because you are a power station, uh, which is fantastic. And sometimes you can get paid more to export electricity than you get charged to import it. Which is pretty cool. More on that later. Um, all right, uh, you probably need a smart meter. If you've got an old meter, it will spin backwards. That's no good. Uh, you might need a new fuse for your home supply. This is free. It's a 10-minute job from your local power company. You might need some new wiring. Depends on how old and rubbish yours is. Uh, and you might want a battery. Batteries are great for storing excess electricity, but you don't have to store electricity as electricity. Um, well, um, you can use an immersion heater. So there are solar powered immersion heaters. What they do is they sense how much electricity is being generated. If you are generating more than you use, it will switch on the immersion heater and start heating up a tank of water for you, which means you do not need to buy gas to heat your bath water or your tap water or anything else. So solar panels don't just replace electricity, they can also replace or supplement gas, which is very exciting. All right, so, so what do panels look like? They are big, huge things usually delivered by the pallet. Um, each of these generates 315-ish uh, kilowatts. And, and although they are big, they are light. These weigh about 19 kilos each. You know, you can easily lift one by yourself. They are light enough to be installed on top of your roof uh, without your roof collapsing. Um, or you can just remove all of your tiles, which is what we did. This is about half the tiles we've removed. Um, and the reason to do this is if, if you put panels on top of your roof, uh, you might need netting around them to stop birds uh, from nesting underneath them. Uh, and also, I think this is what they look like when they're installed. So they, I, I think they're quite nice when they're flush like that. Um, you will also need scaffolding, lots and lots of scaffolding. Uh, it depends on how tall your building is, but you will need people with metal poles to come and bash things together. Great. Um, so but those are the panels. Panels installed. Next thing is the inverter. This is it. This is a big magic box. Uh, you can see those sort of black wires going down the roof beams into there. So they're carrying DC, goes into the inverter. Uh, it's phase match with your local grid, turns into AC. Um, and it, you know, it, it doesn't need to be wired in, so it has power. Um, it makes a bit of noise. It's got some fans, it's got some relays, it clunks a bit, so that's why it's in the loft. Uh, but you know, you can put it anywhere that's sort of out of the way. Now, there are lots of different models of inverters. Um, why did we choose this one? Uh, well, let me show you a close up and you will immediately understand because it has Wi Fi. Um, and that means you can run firmware updates on your solar panels. Who wouldn't want to do that? Um, this one also has serial ports and USB logging and an API. I just really like gadgets, okay? I don't think I need to explain myself to an EMF audience. Gadgets are brilliant. Anything that has an ethernet socket is automatically cooler than anything that doesn't. Uh, this is the battery. Again, this is another big hefty box. Um, makes a bit of noise with fans and everything. Um, despite the size, this only stores about two kilowatt hours, so about 20% of our daily domestic use. Uh, and this has sensors which clip to your uh, electricity feed, and you know once it sees our uh, electricity is flowing out of the house, it starts charging. Um, and it can be set to discharge uh, in the evening or when electricity prices are high. Uh, it's great. You, you can also see in the bottom right there a home plug because, again, this has an Ethernet socket, which means it has a an API, which means I can get lots of data out of it, which means I can draw lots of graphs. Um, now, would you like to see inside the battery? Please, please raise your hands if you'd like to see inside the battery. Ah, oh, well, listen, obviously do not open batteries themselves. That lets out the magic smoke. Bad times, my friends, bad times. But we can take the lid off this and look inside. It is some fiendishly complicated circuitry. Yeah, no, it's just a Raspberry Pi. 
everything in the world is a Raspberry Pi now. My, my domestic batteries are Raspberry Pis. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, even the gang. Um, so let's take a look at orientation. Where, how do you want to place the solar panels for, for maximum efficiency? So uh, Liz and I have moved house a lot. And in the last 15 years, we've lived in three different houses and we fitted solar to each of them. So the, the best orientation uh, is the one on the left, and that is southwest. So um, you might remember from uh, you know, life that the sun rises in the east and then sets in the west. Um, and so anything south facing is going to be illuminated by the sun. But if things are faced west slightly, then um, they will be illuminated more in the afternoon and evening, which is great because that's generally when you tend to use a lot of uh, electricity. Uh, the, the middle property is where we are at the moment, and that has a perfect east-west split. So the east panels are being illuminated all the way through the morning, and then at midday, both of them are being illuminated, and then the west side uh, is being illuminated all the way through the evening. Um, and, and that works really well, and I've got so many graphs to show you. Uh, and on the right is the worst the worst orientation. This is the first place that we did, which is northwest, southeast, and that's rubbish. Uh, because it just, bleh. and yet it still generates all the electricity that that house needs across the year. Now, okay, satellite photos are one thing, but I think we can do a bit better for that as it's EMF. I'm gonna fire up the drones. Let's see if this video works. No, that video has not worked. So, uh, <laughs> or has it worked? I can't tell anymore. No, uh, can you raise your hands if you saw a video? No one saw it. Oh, there was a video. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I took that video in the very brief period of time when it was legal to fly a drone on your own property. It isn't anymore. So don't do it. It's naughty. Um, so uh, there are some things that uh, solar panels can't do. They, they are not completely magic. Uh, and the first is they don't work in a power cut. Um, if you have them tied to the grid, there, there is a risk of two things. First is that if there's a power cut uh, and you're uh, panels aren't generating enough electricity, you'll suffer brownouts in the home. But also if you're generating too much and you're exporting it, it will go to the grid and people who are working on there who think that the grid is, is off uh, could be hurt. Um, now with some newer systems, you can reroute all of your circuitry to go through um, the batteries and your house can be completely islanded. It's a lot more expensive. Um, they don't self-clean. Now we're really lucky in the UK because it rains. It rains a lot. It's raining today, uh, and that will just wash off any bird poo or uh, leaves or anything like that, which is really useful. If you're in a hotter, dustier climate, yes, you might want to uh, get up there with the squeegee and just clean them off occasionally. Uh, nothing lasts forever, I'm sorry to say. Death comes to us all. Um, uh, oh, that was grim. Um, but solar panels um, have uh, guarantees, usually for about 10 to 25 years. Uh, they will degrade over time, but they will follow a very predictable uh, degradation curve. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, if they uh, exceed that, uh, oh, sorry, if they don't perform to expectations, uh, you, you should be insured for that. But things like uh, batteries and inverters can and will die, so you might want to budget for that. There is no way to reverse the polarity to generate extra sunshine, which I think is a big mistake, and we need to get our top scientists working on that. So, okay, nerds, it's graphing time. So uh, all these graphs are generated by, guess what, a Raspberry Pi, a bit of Python, a bit of PHP. It's all open source. It's on my GitHub. Go nuts with it. So this is a typical spring day. This is a, a couple of days ago. Not many clouds in the sky. Uh, and you can see there on the left, it starts generating from the moment the sun rises, like 5 a.m., we're generating electricity. And then it stops generating electricity when the sun sets. Um, and that generated, I think, 24 kilowatt hours in a day. That's twice the amount of electricity that our house used. So we used 10, and we, you can think of it as we used 10, and then we sold 14 back to our neighbors. Uh, now, I, I said that the uh, inverter gives me details from each side, so east and west. So let's now split that graph in two and show you what each side did. So there we go. The, uh, the orange is the east side, the blue is the uh, west side. Now, what's really interesting here is you can see how weather conditions can affect one side but not the other. So there's this big dip in the east, uh, I think about nine o'clock. So there obviously was some cloud cover there. But because the west side isn't directly under the cloud cover, it's just receiving the diffuse light, it doesn't suffer 
as much. And we, we can see that on other days, that weather conditions, you know, on the west or the east will really only affect one side. If, if you know, it's completely cloudy everywhere, it will affect both sides. But splitting your panels so that one side faces one way, one the other way, is a really great way um, to, to increase the efficiency, or the overall efficiency of the system. So, all right, this is, this is all about generating electricity, but what does it do for us buying in electricity? As we all know, fuel prices are rising and rising and rising. Uh, what, what does this mean for us? So, uh, we use Octopus Energy uh, for our provider. They uh, take half hourly readings from our smart meter. This is from a couple of weeks ago. So, you can see sort of midnight to early morning, our house uses about 200 watt hours, and that's having the Wi-Fi on and, you know, gadgets in sleep mode and, you know, all the rest of it. So we use a little bit of electricity, which is supplemented by, by the batteries. But as soon as the sun rises, we stop paying for electricity. Our smart meter knows exactly when we bought electricity and when we're not, and it says, oh, you've stopped buying electricity now, you're actually exporting it. Now, there's a little blip there in the morning that's sticking the toaster on or the kettle on. And then once that's done, we stop paying for electricity. And, you know, Liz and I both work from home. We both have laptops and screens and everything like that. And during the day, we are not paying for electricity because we are, the, the sun is giving it all to us. There's a blip there in the middle that I think that's me sticking the microwave on for a delicious microwave lunch. Yay. Um, and then come the evening, th there's a big spike there. That's probably, you know, maybe that's turning on the tumble dryer or the PlayStation or something like that. Um, but yeah, that, that's just showing that on a typical day, on a fairly ordinary house with solar panels, you don't need to pay for electricity. The sun will do it all for you. Um, and you know, we're also charging up the battery and discharging it. Now, what, what about selling electricity? This is great, we don't need to buy electricity. That has cut our energy bills heftily, but this is how we make money from it. So again, I, I said most energy providers will pay you just a flat five and a half P for every kilowatt hour you export to your neighbors. Octopus um, will, they do spot pricing on the day before. They say, this is the half hourly price of electricity. And this is what we will pay you. So the red line there is how much they will pay. Uh, as you can see, there's more energy demand sort of at seven, eight, nine in the evening than there is uh, earlier in the day. Um, but you can see there with those sort of thick purple bars, that's how much we're selling. Um, and what we can do with the battery is say, oh, you know what? Energy prices are gonna be really high this evening. Don't discharge the battery until energy prices make it worthwhile. It's kind of up to you what you want to do. Um, for us, you know, it's just easier to say, you know what, supplement our domestic use. When the, when the toaster goes on, start discharging the battery rather than buying in electricity. Uh, but it's up to you, you know, if you want to turn this into a money-making scheme, then yeah, you can absolutely say charge the battery when electricity prices are low and then discharge when they're high. Um, uh, different strokes for different folks. I wish we had a, a bigger battery, but batteries are super expensive. So let's just go take a look at, uh, this is last week. Um, this is last week in power. Uh, and it's been a, a fairly nice week, but you can see the sort of difference in the days there. You know, some days are cloudier and rainier than others. The yellow line is how much um, solar power we generated. The bluish line is how much electricity we bought. And when it's above zero, that's us buying electricity, we're paying for it. When it's below zero, that's the energy company paying us for electricity. Um, you don't need to be a mathematician and do lots of complex calculus to see that come spring and summer, we tend to sell more electricity than we use. And this is, again, the amazing thing about solar power in a domestic setting is that you end up generating so much more than you can use just off a fairly ordinary roof. So I'm gonna show you, uh, I think this is the last 14 months um, of electricity and, and the property we're in at the moment. Now you can see December there, rubbish. Hardly generated any electricity whatsoever. But remember what I said earlier, the average UK home uses about 10 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. Call it 30 months, uh, 30 days in a month, that's uh, 300, uh, kilowatt hours per month. And you can see there, seven out of 12 months, we exceed that. We exceed uh, that sort of 300 kilowatt hours per month. In, in most months, we generate more than we use. And yeah, okay, we can't store it all, so we sell it to our neighbors. Um, but it, I'm just showing you here that it is 
for the majority of the time, solar panels will generate more than you can use. Um, maybe I should buy less efficient electronics. That, that's another interesting thing, it's a, just a side note. The average home is using less electricity now than it did 10 years ago because our gadgets and our fridges and you know all of our appliances are more efficient, uh, which I think is interesting. Um, now months do vary, you know, some months are sunnier than others, you know, you might have a particularly rainy June or, uh, or a particularly sunny uh, autumn, uh, but you can see there that there's a bit of variation. Um, so uh, the, I'm now going to show you uh, another graph. This is a property um, from a few years ago. Um, and again, this is uh, four years of complete use and then uh, two years. Uh, so you can see there on the left, that's the, uh, you know, how much electricity we've generated over the year, more than 3.6 megawatt hours off one roof. And Again, 10 times 364, yeah. We are generating over 100% of our electricity needs. Um, I, I just think that it, it blows my mind every time I see it, that you know, in, in a typical house, it's entirely possible to generate you know, between three to five megawatt hours per, per year. It's not enough to charge a DeLorean, but you know, it's, it's pretty damn good. Um, so I've done this sort of big overview. I'm now gonna sort of crash zoom in to, to show you one day in detail. And this is a really nerdy graph, uh, and I make absolutely no apologies for it. Uh, it's ridiculously complicated, so I'm gonna talk you through it. So the, the yellow line is solar. There is no solar generated uh, in the morning, and then sunrise, yay, nice solar, and then down, and it goes, great. Um, red is the electricity that we have used. So you can see we're using a bit of electricity, uh, and then there's a spike in the morning, a lunchtime spike, and then this big spike in in the middle is us charging an electric car and you can see that uses an awful lot of electricity blue is the battery level so during the evening uh, well you know midnight to sort of seven uh, our battery very slowly discharges that's great and as soon as the sun rises it starts to charge again oh we're cooking some toast the battery starts discharging oh we stopped carries on charging up we start charging the car and the battery just goes and it just pumps as much as it can into our uh, wiring which then goes into the car now the green is the uh, electricity that we buy so you can see sort of early in the morning we're buying we, the amount that we use and the amount that we buy are roughly the same as soon as the sun rises yeah we, we stop buying electricity we start selling it Take a look at the gap on that very big, I, I don't know why I'm pointing at the camera like this. Uh, I, oh, I have a laser pointer. If only I could fire lasers into EMF. Um, that gap uh, between the red and the green is the difference between what we use and what we pay for. And that difference is the amount of sun, which is generating electricity at the moment, and the amount of stored electricity from the battery. So you can see there is this really hefty gap. And if you've got an electric car, it is entirely possible to drive on sunshine. Um, you know, you, you can set it to, to slow charge, just turn on when, you know, solar power is at its maximum and you can start discharging a battery into your car. Um, and that means you're paying, you know, nothing to drive around. You know, if you thought petrol prices were, were getting worse and worse, uh, well, good news, spend thousands and thousands on an EV and solar panels and you can drive for free. Mm. Now, of course, not every day is this good. So, um, yeah, it turns out solar panels don't work in the snow. This is why I said it would be really handy if we could reverse the polarity and heat the solar panels and melt the snow. Um, but you can see there, you know, once the snow does melt, there's a you know, tiny bit of electricity generated. Um, solar panels work in the rain. They work when it is cloudy. They work when it is foggy. If you can see the solar panels by sunlight, then they will generate stuff, not, not necessarily, you know, gigawatts, but they will still generate, even in the rather rubbish British climate. Um, now, I, I've been graphing these solar panels for, for years, uh, you know, Raspberry Pi is sucking up all the data, uh, and I decided to publish it as open data. So if you want to see what, you know, real data from real solar panels is like, uh, you can go to my website and download that. And I am blown away that people actually did that. Um, there are several proper scientific papers out by proper scientists who have used my solar panel data and, and published it. It's like, wow, brilliant, cool. Um, anyway, 
As we get to the end, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is cost. Um, I really like this tweet that, that someone did, which is, you know, you, you rarely ask, oh, yeah, what, what's the payback on getting a new bathroom or stuff like that? I, for me, solar panels are, are an environmental and kind of a moral uh, issue. But, you know, I appreciate they cost money and they make money. It does make me feel like Mr. Burns sometimes. You know, I see a nice sunny day and I think I'm making loads of money from the sun. <laughs> um, so selling back makes a significant amount of money, especially if you've got a time of day tariff. Uh, you can see there again, a brief graph just showing that, you know, every day or every week, how much money can make from, from selling back. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through and do some quick maths with you. So, um, the cost of equipment is going to vary. It will depend on government subsidies. It will depend on how complicated your house is. Um, if local councils quite often have group buying schemes, uh, how many panels you need. But if you, you know, if, if you just want to buy a few panels to charge up gadgets, you know, you can buy them for, for tens to hundreds of pounds on online. If you want domestic installed on your roof, expect to pay between 3,000 and 12,000 pounds. Now, that is a big chunk of change and it's a big gap. Um, and it really is going to depend on, you know, local installers and local conditions. But it is worth, you know, getting lots of different quotes um, and seeing how much, you know, your roof can uh, can bear. Um, there is that cost of installation, um, especially if you need scaffolding on, on both sides or if you've got, you know, really tricky um, uh, wiring that needs uh, doing. There is a bit for maintenance. Um, so, you know, you might need to replace some things. Um, you probably don't need to wash down the panels, but you might want to, to budget for that. And then this is the other big cost, the cost of changing your habits. So, do you want to live in a world where you can only use the microwave when the sun is shining? That you can only turn the oven on when the battery is full? You probably don't, but you might find yourself changing your habits to go, oh, you know what? Um, I can see the weather forecast is going to be sunnier in the afternoon, so that's when I'll schedule the, the dishwasher to go on. Changing habits is hard. Um, you know, saying, oh, well, I only want to charge my car when it's the sun is shining might leave you with not enough mileage, but that that's worth thinking about. But there, there are financial rewards as well. So you can sell electricity back to the grid, which is great, but also you don't pay for electricity when the sun is shining. Now, we did the maths on this um, a few months ago before the latest price rises. And for our house, with the sort of, I think, five kilowatt uh, panels on our roof, our panels basically save us at least 800 pounds a year. And that's a, a mixture of selling energy, uh, selling electricity, and not buying it. Um, if electricity prices go up, that's going to go up as well. So you can start to work out, well, what's the payback time? You know, if I'm spending £8,000 on panels and I'm saving £800 per year, is 10 years a good payback period? You can work that out for yourself. Um, there's also improvement to your uh, energy performance certificate. So if you want to sell the property, you need an EPC. Higher EPC is, is good. So that helps make you money. But I think the most important thing is moral smugness. Can you really put a price on how good it feels to be an eco hippie? I don't think you can. Um, look, what, what I wanted to say, and what I hope I've encouraged you to understand with this talk is that solar panels work. Not only do they work, they work really well in the UK. And, and if you install them, and if you get inverters with uh, APIs and batteries with ethernet ports, you can start doing really cool, nerdy things with electricity. Um, and I think that's brilliant. I want to thank you so much for, for coming to my talk. I really do appreciate you, you taking the time. And I look forward to seeing you at the next EMF.